What's up guys? Um, my name is Isaiah Narvez. I'm a firefighter and I'm stationed out here in Germany, Spain Island Air Base. I would say the main reason why I joined the Air Force in the first place was, I would say, the, the schooling and the better opportunities that it could give me. Growing up, you know, it was, I didn't really have uh, all the opportunities in the world due to, you know, some financial reasons. So I knew, you know, the military was a good route for me and all the opportunities and benefits, school, travel, and all that. So if I wanted to do something, I know the military could take care of me. So that's why I wanted to join. And uh, I also knew that it was a good uh, stepping stone for my career. And I'll go into my career as a firefighter. I know that it was gonna give me um, the certifications and all everything that I needed to, to become a firefighter if I wanted to leave the Air Force outside. So I knew joining the military that had great benefits. It looked good on paper if I wanted to get out. Uh, the schooling was free, so I've done a lot of school in here and for free. And I'm a certified firefighter in America too. Even though I'm fighting out here in Germany, fighting fires out here in Germany, in America I'm qualified. So if I do get out, I don't have to go through a long extensive period in some states to become a firefighter. I'm, I already have a head start and I have military under my name if I did get out. So it would say my name, military, and all, my, all of my certifications. So that's why I joined the military because I knew it was gonna be a good uh, stepping stone for me and it could give me so much. So I've been in the Air Force since 2016 in February. So if I do the math correct, that is three years in six months. So I've been in for three years and six months. I signed a six year contract. So that means I got two and a half years left. So uh, in three years and six months, I am an E4. I'm a senior airman and I just took my uh, staff test, I'll say about two months ago. And I'm gonna find out around August 20, 23rd, 2019, this year. So I find out soon if I made it. So if you're watching this, there's a possible chance that I'm an E5 now or I'm still an E4. So that's it. So I've been here for three years, you know, I'm still kind of new. I got a lot to learn in this game and uh, I don't got a lot of time left. And I'm still kind of debating if I want to re-enlist or get out, so. The name of my job is, it's, it's technically called fire protection. That's the, the professional name. But uh, the, the street name, I'm a firefighter. Straight up firefighter out here in the military. Everything you see that a civilian department does, that's what we do. But you know, some military things mixed in, like some formations some, and some stations in the mornings, some military qualifications we gotta keep up, like some internet training, some CVTs, all that, that's military stuff. But that's, that's basically pretty it. But fire, and then everything else is just fire related as in training gaining knowledge, applying the knowledge, learning. So I'm, I'm a firefighter in the military and my AFSE is 3E751. So I'm, I am a five level. If you're uh, comfortable or you understand the AFSEs, it's 3E751, so I am a five level. When you first come in, you'll be 3E731. So that you, you'll learn that as you come in or as you progress, if you don't know. When I went into the recruiter's office and I went, uh, went through the whole process, you know, getting qualified and going up to MEPS, you know, doing the whole duck walk thing and all that, I wanted to come in the military, no doubt about it, a firefighter. Cause that's what I wanted to do in the civilian world. You know, I wanted to be a firefighter. I wanted, my whole goal was to help people and that's how I knew how to help people. Or that's the only really goal that I had in reach to help people. So that's why I wanted to become a firefighter. So when I signed up and I walked in there, I knew what I wanted. I knew what I wanted out uh, right away. Sometimes it's gonna be a little harder for people getting what they want because at a certain point, or after I went through MEPS and after I was 100% qualified, after I was to the point where I can sign for a job and a ship out date, I, um, there was no fire firefighter uh, slots open. And you know, my recruiter, being a recruiter, you know, trying to bump up Air Force and all that, he was uh, trying to convince me to, to sign, you know, open general or uh, go something else. 
do something else because he was telling me there was no he was saying that the career field is too small and that I will most likely be waiting a long time and some of the sometimes those words work on certain people because uh, certain people have some situations where they want to get out and they need to leave and they just need to go so long that that keyword long time can can trigger somebody and they'll just sign for something else but thankfully thank God that I was in a I was in a better situation where I didn't have to leave so fast so I told him I'm like I'll wait as long as I have to just let me know when you have a fire spot so I didn't sign open general because that means that any job in the general aspect you can get they'll just give it to you if they need a spot so I didn't open that I didn't sign anything open and I didn't sign anything that wasn't fire if it wasn't fire I didn't sign so in about like two weeks he calls me up and he's like yeah I got a, a fire job for you and the ship out date is in like three and a half weeks so I signed it in three and a half weeks I, w I was out and um, so yeah I mean it was pretty simple for me it was either I, I knew I knew what I wanted, so that's why it was simple. He was like, do you want this? I said, yes, I want this. And then he was like, well, we don't have that. You could do this. And I was like, no, it's a simple, straight up, no. I want this, and that's the only thing I'm gonna sign for. So I guess when you show your confidence in the recruiter's office and you show, uh, show them or show her that you want something and you know you want it, they're not really gonna push and bother you with something else because it's a waste of time. So was this job something I wanted to do? Yes, it was. I answered that in the last question. Uh, this job, I have about a total of like three, four people that uh, were firefighters or currently firefighters in my family now. So it's always been kind of normal to me to hear about firefighting and to hear about experiences and um, just to know the job a little bit. So I guess that's why when I made the decision to be a firefighter or a uh, made a decision to be in a career to help people firefighting came up because that that's I guess what I've been uh, known or that's what I've been taught growing up so yes this is a job that I wanted to do and hopefully if I do get out the military and all that and I have to revert back to my uh, certifications in military training I could become a firefighter outside outside the military of course so the other jobs that I was kind of interested in if i definitely couldn't get fire protection or firefighting like if i couldn't get that no like no questions that they told me straight up it was impossible another job that i was interested in getting would have to have been something like in the medical field as in paramedics uh emt and all that because that's closely related to fire because fire firefighters we do respond to a uh, medical in certain bases in certain bases this is air force in certain bases which they're changing now they're going to change that to all bases all bases are supposed to be running medical calls now but um that's in the process now this base when i first got here they didn't run medical calls that was some that was changed like probably six months to a year while i've been in here that's when we started running medicals with the paramedics in the med clinic so paramedic EMT, that's what I would have went for, try to go for if I couldn't get fire protection because it's, it's closely related. It's still helping people, it's still medical field, which I'm interested in. I'm interested in the body. Uh, I'm interested of how to like solve emer medical emergencies. I, lo I, I love the anatomy. It really interests me. It's a very difficult field, but I felt like if that was my field, I would have became an expert in it just how I love putting my attention and my energy into the actual firefighting job. I would say paramedic is the only one. I don't really have anything else. If I really had to choose something, I would have chose, if I couldn't have paramedic either, I would have chose air fuel controller because that, that makes money on the outside. So when you join the air force or join the military, just, just try to have a good plan because you don't know if you're going to be stuck in here or don't know if you want to get out. You don't know if you want to get out. And so just choose something that one you want to do and if you can't choose something you want to do try to choose something that interests you at the same time but also could set you up on getting out as well so if i couldn't have fire or emt paramedic i would have chose air fuel controller because they give you everything in the military certifications training all that you get out you know you got your military preference you got your training and then you're already certified so and then you're already going to be making bank when you get out so it's it's pretty simple just be smart when you join Did I sign a four or six year contract? I answered that in the beginning of the video. I said six years. I was, I'm in right now for three and a half. I got two and a half left. I would say sign for six. I wouldn't say sign for four. I would say sign for six because I feel once you get your job, once you go through boot camp, once you go through tech school, if it's a lengthy tech school, you're gonna be over your six month mark once you get to your first base. If it's a short tech school, I would say you're about like four months in. That's it. Oh, that's almost the same. So, but it doesn't really take 
takes time for you to, to understand the Air Force, understand the military and all that. I would say once you're about two, year, two years in, that's when you can really start taking advantage of the opportunities because that's when you fully understand, or not fully understand, but you have a, a bigger grasp on it. So I would say sign for six because once, if you sign for four and it's like you're already two years in, or two and a half, you go on a little deployment, TDY, those are the little ones, or if you go on a big deployment, six months, you don't have a lot of time left. So if you join the military and you're trying to do school, or if you're trying to take advantage of an opportunity the military could give you and you don't have a lot of time at the same time, then that'll probably cause some more stress for you, cause you to extend your contract or re-enlist if, you know, God forbid, you don't want to, make you, force you to do something. So sign for six, take that extra two years, it's not that bad. It's not bad at all, actually. It, it gives you a lot more time to figure out what you want to do. It gives you more time to realize what you like and you don't like. I look back and I say, if I would have joined for four, I would have six months left. I'm trying to go to a new base and I wouldn't be able to go to a new base unless if I sign or extend my contract for another year and a half or two years. And then I would have to stay here at this base. And then all that time crunch. And then I'm, I'm still not sure if I want to get out so you see now I'll have to re-enlist for another four years and once the first four years is up and you and re-enlist for another four or two or three, time starts to add up. So I'm glad I signed for six because now I got, I got two and a half years to, to set myself up to leave if I want to go because I'm still not sure. My tech school was in San Angelo, Texas. Air Force basic training is in San Antonio, which is about two and a half hours, three hours south of San Angelo. So once you're done with basic, you get on a bus or after you're done, yeah, after you're done with basic, you get on a bus and you drive two and a half, three hours to San Angelo. And that base is a, it's a pretty small base. It's a training base, of course, because you're going there to train. And the base is, I'm not gonna say in the middle of nowhere because it has some good areas around there, but it's pretty almost isolated. Uh, a lot of dirt or sand, dry, hot i went during may june july and it was hot it was hot all the time i was sweating all the time that that's just what it is it's it's hot and tech school in san angelo i was I, if i recall correctly it was 64 training days meaning monday through friday was everything that counted if you train that day that was a training day saturday sundays holidays don't count so 64 training days that added up to about three months and it was simple as that monday through friday you was jobbing so it wasn't really that bad tech school in san angelo was fun i feel like it was fun because i want i was in a job that i wanted to be for another big reason too i'm the type of person to uh to make the best out of almost every situation so i was in a hot city very hot and i was in the fire academy so i love the hot weather i love the fire academy because that's what i wanted to do so i had a great time monday through friday we would go to the, uh, the fire academy we'll wake up around four o'clock in the morning maybe 3 30 i don't really remember that much but it was early i think it was like 4 3 30. i think i'll wake up at 3 30 to be there at 4. and we'll go eat go to the fire academy train do uh certain certain weeks have uh, certain milestones and certain subjects that we have to learn and go through like firefighter one firefighter two hazmat airport firefighting emr as an emergency medical responder all that so all that a firefighter we need to know we go through it you know first month is this first month is firefighter one second month is firefighter two third month is hazmat hazardous materials with uh, emr and so i had a pretty good time i was learning what i wanted to learn i was acing tests because i was doing what i wanted to do and and because I was having a great time. The area in San Angelo had some great, had, had some good spots, had some fun spots, had like a river, had a couple nice restaurants. If I recall correctly, they had a, a pet store, I love animals. So I remember going there once, petting a cat, no big deal. But it was, it was, a, it was a great area. Just make, make the time great, be happy. Uh, so for some people who don't know about the military or if you're thinking about going in, you don't know. In tech school, you have certain phases. So don't think once you get to tech school, is going to be all freedom and you just go and do whatever you want. Uh, the military has a, a, a nice hold on new people who come in. So once you come in, you're going to be in a certain phase. 
I, I don't know what it's called now, but you're gonna be in a phase when you get in there. So it's gonna be like, once you get to San Angelo, they're gonna babysit you. They're gonna tell you, you have to be in your room by this time, you can't wear these clothes, you can't eat this at this certain place for a certain amount of time until I would say I think like four weeks is the average time. So if you stay out of trouble for those four weeks and show the military that you can follow the rules and stay out of trouble, then that's when they'll give you the freedom. So you have the extra two months to, to have fun. So if you don't mess it up in the first month and go crazy and get drunk and crash a car or come late to your dorm room, then you should be fine. So don't think once you get there, it's gonna be all fun and games. Once you get there, it's gonna be work, it's gonna be serious, but just know if you put in the effort first and keep your discipline, that everything else will follow the, the enjoyment, the stress fee, the stress free, and all the excitement that you hear from everybody. So just keep your head down, work hard, stay honest, and just do your thing and everything else, every, everything positive will, uh, will follow you. So for someone who hasn't really thought about so much about military and the jobs, I know I found this out in, um, in basic, during basic, your job could only bring you to so many bases. There are certain jobs out there that can only bring you to two bases out of all the bases that the military has. There's some jobs that can bring you to like 10 or even one. But the good thing with firefighting is that every base needs firefighting. Like every location you go to, they need protection from any type of accident, emergency, because fires don't, they don't criticize on location or where you're at. The fires can start anywhere. So the good thing with this job is that if you want to travel, this job could help you travel because every base needs firefighting. Air, every Air Force base needs a firefighter. So either it's all military, civilian, or mixed, there's firefighters there. And if I recall correctly, I just looked at the dream sheet, or I've been looking at it, firefighting could go to practically any base, any base. You could take little deployments or big deployments to, to bigger bases, remote bases, isolated bases, different branches bases, marine bases, army bases, and all that. Every base needs a firefighter. So if you're looking to travel and you want to be a firefighter, this is the perfect job because you can literally go anywhere. Okay, so firefighting in a nutshell, but firefighting in the military in a nutshell because that's what y'all want to know. Everything's different in the military. Everything is a lot more, I don't know, I would say complicated or simplified. I don't know. Everybody has a different take on it. So I would say firefighting in the military in a nutshell, what I can tell you what I do on a daily basis. From when I first got there as in training and being a newbie to now being more experienced and almost uh, an E5 staff sergeant NCO. If you understand those terms as in as an airman, almost going into a supervisor role. So firefighting in a nutshell in the military when I first got there. So when I first got to my base here, Germany, Spain, Dahlem, I uh, basically in process got my shift. At the time they were running 24 hours, meaning 24 hours on and then 24 hours off. It's different at every base. Some of the bases do run 24s, a lot of them, some run 48, 48, some run 24, 48. Uh, is, is different to every base you go. So this base, when I first got here, it was running 24 on, 24 off with the K-Day, meaning once every two weeks, I'll get three days off in a row. So when I first got here, I was new. I didn't have anything under my belt. I had no training, I know. I had the little bit of certifications that tech school gave me, but that's just the bare minimum. So I'll go to the station in the morning as a newbie. Got, got my shift going, got all that. Uh, we check out the trucks. Make sure all the equipment's on there, make sure the truck turns on, make sure the trunks, the truck pumps water, make sure the pump's working right, make sure all the equipment on the truck is working. So when we respond to uh, an emergency, all the tools are there, all the equipment, all the medical stuff, everything works, everything is filled, uh, oxygen tanks are filled, spare air bottles for the mask and so we can breathe, they're filled and ready to go just to make sure all the trucks are ready to go because the last thing you want is not having your pack ready or not filled with air so when you turn it on you have no air and you're just sucking in the mask and suffocate and so that'll be the first thing the the second thing is training as a newbie expect to train 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 
expect uh, supervisors, NCO, staff sergeants, senior airmen, E4 to E6, maybe E7s, sometimes even E9s coming out every once in a while to get on you and to make sure you know your job, to ask you questions, to harass you. Um, just just have, uh, out in the fire department, I just say have thick skin because if you come in there willing to learn, you'll be fine if you come in there thinking, the, the, not, not to throw shots at anybody, but if you come in there and you're a prior fire, fire and you act like, a, like, you're, like you're high speed and you know it all, you may know it all, but on paper you're still a newbie. So just be humble, humble yourself, you know? You may know it all, but if you do know it all, just you know that there's something to learn every day. So after the truck check, I was train, train, train. Uh, there's things called CDCs to get to the, the next skill level, because when you come in, you'll be at a three. The next one's a five. So to get to the next skill level, you need three, three things on your belt. You'll need a ARF, airport, airport rescue firefighting. That's with the airport side, because we're military, we protect jets. Uh, big cargo planes, uh, refuelers, civilian aircraft that come in, all kinds of aircraft, helicopters, all kinds. So you'll be that'll, that'll be the first thing that you'll be trained on is ARF. The second thing will be structural, called pumper, and that'll teach you how to drive and operate the, the the fire trucks you see on the civilian side. You know the ones that drive on the street that you see all the time. That that's what you'll be learning next. And the third one, the last one, is, is called NWS, the mobile water supply, meaning you'll basically know how to conduct operations on how to be a mobile water unit. So if someone needs water over there, but they can't get water over there, you'll know how to conduct the operations that, to bring the water to them and know how to pump it. So as a newbie, you have a whole year to learn all those, all those three learn it, pass a test, and then pass a qualification test with the vehicles, get your licenses, and move on to the next one. So that's, that, that's a nutshell for the newbie. Once you hit your five level, life gets pretty, I'll say pretty simple, or more slowed down. Once you get your five level, you come into work, check out the trucks, that never changes, you check out all the trucks, all the time. Check your assignments, see where you're at, and uh, if you have any newbies, you're training with the newbies, not actually like training with them to get, as in like you're, you're a newbie yourself, you're training with them as in you're helping them, you're teaching them, you're asking them questions to help them get better, you're showing them the way, you know, you're not neglecting them, you're being a good airman to make sure the people around you know what they're doing, especially in this job because if someone doesn't know what they're doing and you go into a burning house or you do a car fire or anything dangerous with them, they don't know what they're doing, they make a wrong step, something blows up, something falls on them, and, or something dangerous could have happened that they could have avoided because they didn't know what they're doing. So as a five level, that's what you'll be doing, you'll be training and all that. And then after the training, you'll be doing your training too because you have some CDCs, some, some qualifications you still need to get as a five level, every level has different qualifications. So you'll just be working on that. But since you're at a new level, you already showed your supervisors in the military that, what is it, that, that year you're competent. You can, you can train, you can keep your head down, stay out of trouble, all that. So they won't be really much on you. You still got time limits and all that, but they're not gonna be very much on you. They trust you now, you know. You're, you're basically an adult in the military now. No matter your age, you're an adult in the military now since you got your five levels. So they'll, they'll back off you a little bit. And if you start veering off or showing them that you need to someone on you all the time then they'll, that's when they'll jump back on you so job that as a newbie and as a five that's the nutshell um job in the military as a firefighter all together come in check your trucks train train all day there's gyms at the station if not you go to the main main gym on the base work out run calls emergencies just like a regular firefighter would just stand by all day waiting for an emergency if not you're training getting yourself better So the advice I'll give to a new airman that walks to the stalls, I've already done this because we, we received a lot of good uh, new people, a good amount of them. So the advice that I give out when I see new people and they come to me and they ask about the job and the Air Force and all that, I would say just be humble and open your ears. That's it. I say be humble, open your ears, and if you don't know something, ask. Because those three right there, 
will get you so far in the Air Force, will get you so far in any type of career. Because of the being humble aspect, if someone tells you something, as in this is a way to do it, or if someone teaches you a new way to do something, or trying to explain something to you and you think you know, humble yourself, you know? No, know and tell yourself that there's different ways of doing things, there's stuff that you don't know, and just listen. Just listen to the person trying to help you, listen to the person that's trying to teach you the, uh, the right way or a different way. Just be humble because if you humble yourself, you show, you're showing other people that you're coachable, that you, 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 you know how to listen, and you're willing to do, the, uh, do things differently or the right way, and that you're not gonna be stubborn or hard to work with or have a bad attitude. So, being humble. Asking questions when you don't know something is very important because there's there will be times where I'll listen to a speech or listen to uh, someone teaching something and they say something an acronym or or something a, a piece of piece of equipment the name I don't know and there there have been times where I didn't ask and there has been times where I went a decent amount of time not knowing something because I didn't ask and. That kind of goes on to the humbleness part. Humble yourself, you know, not everybody knows everything. It's not bad to ask a question. But I know I would have had a simpler time asking the question. No one's gonna look down on you for asking a simple question or if you think, oh, that question's too easy or I should know this by now, I shouldn't ask that because they're gonna look down on me. No, they're gonna look down on you even more if the situation comes up and you don't know, but you thought in your head, man, I should have, I should have asked that question a week ago when I didn't know, instead of being stuck in a certain situation where they ask you for it, or you're in an emergency and they say they need something like this and you don't know how to do it because you never asked. So stay safe, be humble, ask the question, and work hard, work hard, and work hard. That's it, that's the, that's the advice that I'll give to new people for the job and for the Air Force career. That, that's what they need, that's what you need to, to progress and be successful, that's it. It's, it's that simple. All right, cool, so that's basically firefighting and military in a nutshell. So I really hope that I covered a lot of details. I really hope that I shared some knowledge with you. I really, I really hope that I gave y'all something new, as in like, oh, I didn't know that before. I really hope that I was helpful with this. So if you wanna see more of the area or if you wanna see more of the life in military and how I enjoy it um, with me and my wife, we're on YouTube, we're on Instagram, and you can follow us or look us up on Instagram and YouTube. We got the same name, it's called The Nar Clan. It's gonna be T H E N A R C L A N, The Nar Clan. So if y'all didn't catch it, my first name is Isaiah, my last name is Narvez. So Nar Clan, The Nar Clan, get it? Yeah, so I thought it was pretty catchy. So first name, last name, that's my Instagram, The Nar Clan, YouTube and Instagram so if you want some more insight if you want some more pictures or whatever follow us subscribe and you can to see more info and just a better view on how we live our lives out here and and what you could be doing out here in Germany if you want to become a firefighter so that's a good one if you have any more questions go to my Instagram um, use my first and last name Facebook whatever if you have any more questions please hit me up I'll be I'll be happy to answer any type of questions you have as in how do I enlist to I want to be a firefighter. How do I get water out of a hose? So hit me up on Instagram, Isaiah Narvez, I S A I A H N A R V A E Z. Hit me up. You'll see my face. Any type of questions, just hit me up. All right, y'all. So that's it. Remember, hit me up, subscribe, catch me out there. Peace.